Happy Mother's Day to all you watching uh, church online today. We are so happy to see you in our chat rooms. Do not forget to subscribe and click that bell so you can get notified when we go live. I have asked my wife to join me today on this Mother's Day because I, of course, am not a mother. Not at all. Yeah. So I don't know a whole lot about the matter, what it means to be a mom. I have a mother. I'm married to a mother. But you get what I'm saying. There are some things that are unique to mothering that men just would not know. So a little bit later on in the message, I'm going to turn it over to Cynthia, and she's going to give us some words of wisdom on the mother tip. She's been a mother for a little over 17 years now. Mm -hmm. But uh, before we begin, I want to share scripture with you. I want to go back and talk a little bit about what we said a few weeks ago about being in a storm. Now watch this. In Acts 27, in verse 13, Paul is, is a prisoner, and he's on a ship, and they're sending him to prison. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called a northeaster swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. Right now, there's some things going on in our lives where we're just kind of driven along, just like it's saying in here. We're, we're being driven along by the circumstances that are outside of our control. As we passed to the lee of a small island called Cauda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. So the men hoisted it aboard. Then they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbar of Citrus. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the next day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging. Can you identify right now? We don't know when the end of this thing's going to happen. We finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice. Paul's just rubbing it in. He's, he's one of those guys, he's, I told you so kind of moment right now. You see, earlier on, Paul told him, let's not make this voyage. If we take this voyage, we are going to have some hardships. If we make this decision, it's going to be the wrong decision. But of course, who's going to listen to a prisoner, right? So he stands up and says, I told you so. You should have listened to me. Men, you should have taken my advice and not sailed from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep your courage. Because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God, to whom I belong and to whom I serve. See, there's the key right there. Mm. Right now in this storm, do you know to whom you belong? Mm. That's good. Do you know whom you belong to? Do you serve the God Almighty in heaven who created the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in it? Do you serve God? Right? He says, do not be afraid. I know the God to whom I serve. Do not be afraid, Paul said. You must, um, I'm sorry. Last night an angel Lord came to me and he said, do not be afraid. You must stand trial before Caesar and the God has graciously given you the lives of all those who sail with you. Listen. This storm that they're caught in, they could have avoided. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not every storm that happens in our lives is an attack of the devil. Nope. Not everything negative that goes on is uh, Satan's attack and trying to ruin our lives. Some of the storms we find ourselves in are our own bad decisions, our own choices. Paul tells these guys, don't do this. Mm -hmm. Don't go on this trip. Let's wait. And they didn't take his warning. And so today, listen, I just want to throw this out there. That when situations are happening in our lives, we, we need to sometimes sit back and weigh it out. 
Yeah. Am I in this situation because of a bad decision that I made? Mm -hmm. Or is this a true attack of the enemy coming at me? And Paul finds himself in this storm and he shipwrecked because of someone else's decision. Paul says, take heart, cheer up, you're not going to die. What does Paul know? He, he has this vision from an angel, but Paul also knows the stories of Jesus. He knows of the story that we talked about a few mm -hmm. weeks ago when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and they were caught in a storm. And the disciples yeah. go and they wake up Jesus mm -hmm. and he says to them, hey, where's your faith? You could have calmed the storm. Yeah. Paul knows that story because that mm -hmm. happened before this time. And if Jesus said to those disciples, take heart, take courage, why are you afraid? Mm -hmm. Who's in your boat? This boat can't sink because I'm in it. Paul knows that this boat can't, uh, that he can't lose his life yeah. because Jesus is his, was with him. Not only is he in the boat, but he's in Paul, living on the inside mm -hmm. of him. And he knows that he can be safe. Listen to this. In 1 John 4, 4. You, do, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you <laughs> is greater than the one mm -hmm. who is in the world. Yeah. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. I, I want you to lean into that. Wherever you're watching right now, greater is he that is in you than anything that's happening in society right now. You've got to believe that. You've got to believe that greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And Paul had a revelation of that. In your life, you will experience things because of bad decisions. You will experience things because of other people's bad decisions. Mm -hmm. You will experience things because we live in an evil world and, and, and Satan is the God of this world and sometimes bad things happen. But the Bible says, take heart, Jesus has overcome them. Yeah. He's overcome the world. Be encouraged. God is greater than your bad decisions. Mm, that's good. God is greater than your circumstances. God is greater than COVID-19. Mm -hmm. God is greater than loneliness. God is greater than depression. God is greater than anxiety. God is greater than the thing that you're struggling with in addiction. God is greater than that. So allow him to move and operate in your life. I've asked Cindy to join me today. Uh, and, I, and I asked her uh, a couple days ago, if you had 10 minutes to say to moms something, uh, a big idea, after 17 years of hands-on experience as a mother, what would you say? And she looked at me, she goes, well, that's easy. And then she told me what she would said. So I've seen her notes. Um, I asked her to talk 10 minutes, and she has longer than that of notes. So uh, it's good stuff. I'm going to turn it over to Cindy. Hello, and happy Mother's Day. I'm Cynthia McKelvey. If you don't know who I am, um, his wife. So good. <laughs> And I'm also the mother to three amazing kids, ages 7 to 17. Yep. Now, last week when we were talking about uh, what he was going to preach, he asked me what would I say if I had a few minutes to speak to the moms. And it took me about half a second to respond. And when I did, I said, don't be so hard on yourself. Yep. As moms, we are professionals at piling on the mom guilt. And the guilt is different for everybody. Some people will agonize over not having a clean house. And other people could care less about the house, and they feel guilty that maybe they don't spend enough time with their kids. Yeah. Or others still beat themselves up because they have all the time with their kids, but they find themselves reacting in ways that they swore they wouldn't. You know how it is. One minute Johnny's acting up, and you open up your mouth, and out comes your mom or your dad or whoever it is that raised you. Regardless of what it is that causes your guilt, I want you to know you are not alone. We all go through it. Mm. Now more than ever, thanks to social media or TV shows, there's an unrealistic view of what being a mom is like. Yeah. And we compare ourselves to that view. And more and more we deal with the guilt. Yeah. Why am I not that mom? Help me. I want a clean house and perfect kids. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. Or a perfect husband. Or a perfect husband. Hey. <laughs> let me let you in on a little secret. Are you ready? It's a lie. Mm. 
those pictures that you see, guess what? That lady most likely cleaned up her house and staged it. Photoshop. And it was only clean for about the two and a half seconds it took her to take the picture. Yeah. Her life's not perfect because no one's is. In Galatians 6, 4 through 5 in the Living Translation, it says, Let everyone be sure that he is doing his very best. For then he will have the personal satisfaction of work well done and won't need to compare himself with someone else. Each of us must bear some faults and burdens of our own, for none of us is perfect. So number one, stop comparing yourself. Look at that. Even the Bible is telling us not to compare ourselves. Yeah. And I know that's easier said than done, especially when we've already spent far too long doing it. So how do we just stop? Well, first, no, it's not going to happen overnight. It's a continual changing of your mind or changing of the channel, like my mother-in-law likes to say. God loves us, and he made us joint heirs with mm -hmm. Christ. So whenever those comparing thoughts pop into your head, remind yourself of that. When the girls were small, I always used to get down on myself about not having a house that was showroom quality. Now, it wasn't gross and dirty, but it was definitely lived in. Here's the thing. I spent a lot of time with my girls. We played, we crafted, we learned, and we had a lot of fun. Yeah. But I had a hard time letting go of the thought that I wasn't doing a good enough job because of how my house looked. After all, I was raised in a house that was spotless. You can eat off my mom's floors. Mm -hmm. And one day, I finally felt like the Lord was telling me, I didn't call you to be your mom. I called you to be you. And I wanted my kids to remember time that I spent with them more than the fact that the house was spotless. Besides, you're going to have plenty of time to clean your house when the kids are gone. Mm -hmm. Number two, sometimes you're going to be tired, and that may mean that you're a little crabby. Just sometimes. But a it's okay. <laughs> we've all had those moments. We've had a long day, and we're just exhausted. Yeah. Wouldn't you know, that'll be the precise moment that Johnny decides to ask you again. Again, for the cookie that you already told, you, told him that he could not have. What do you do? Well, if you're normal, mm -hmm. you may just lose your cool and yell. I come from a long line of yellers. We're just loud, passionate even. We may not even be upset, but our volume will exponentially get higher depending on how worked up we are. Because of that, many years ago, I purpose not to yell. Sometimes I win. Sometimes I lose. Either way, I try my hardest every time. Since the beginning of our marriage, Pastor Mike and I have hung on to Ephesians 4.26. It says, And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Now, I've tried my hardest to apply that scripture to my relationship with my children as well. Many, many, many times after I acted in a way that I wasn't proud of, I've made it a point to go back and apologize. I've become so consistent with it that my now teenagers feel comfortable enough to call me out when I'm starting to act some sort of way. And most of the time they'll look at me and they'll be like, mom, you good? And then I have to step back and really check myself. And most of the time I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm just tired. And we move on. Yeah, let's talk about that. It's, it's hard to allow yourself to be vulnerable in that though. Yeah. I mean, when your 14-year-old daughter mm -hmm. wants to say, Mom, are you good? Absolutely. You're mm -hmm. not acting in a normal way. Yeah. Being vulnerable enough, instead of just yelling back mm -hmm. at them, to take that into consideration and have a conversation about it. Absolutely. Because tradition teaches us that the parents are right and yeah. the kids are wrong. Yeah. But when you allow that vulnerability, you're teaching your kids that, you know what, sometimes we all act crabby. It's human. Yeah. But good. own it, apologize, and move on. That's good. Then go take a nap. Never underestimate the power of a good a nap. A good nap. It's like a reset. Yes. Number three, sometimes you just need to get away. Do it. I know that a lot of times moms feel guilty at the thought of leaving their kids, but trust me. Have you ever found yourself hiding in another room because you need a moment? Don't lie. I've read your Facebook and Instagram posts. I'll be honest, I love having my kids around. Finding out that school was canceled for the rest of the school year did not give me anxiety right. in any way, shape, or form. Sure, I'm sad that they're missing out 
on events and milestones. But as far as having them around, I love it. Mm. I'm one of those weird parents that hates when the summer's over. But that doesn't mean that sometimes I don't have to walk out of the room either. There have been times when I've gone upstairs to make my bed, and I may or may not have actually laid in the bed for a good 15 minutes before I actually made it, or come back home from running an errand and stayed in the car for a few extra minutes. You see, I am the person that craves just a few minutes of quiet. Normally, I love being around people. I like the interaction. But every day, I need just a few minutes of quiet. So I make sure to wake up early and soak in that quiet before my kids are awake. Or stay in the bathroom or the car for a few extra minutes. Sometimes, moms, listen, if this is available to you, sometimes I give them away for the night. Whatever it takes to center myself and come out a calm, loving mom. And guess what? Getting away is biblical. Mm. In Matthew 14, 23, it says, After Jesus had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Now think about it. If Jesus needed to get away and have some time alone, we should probably follow suit. Yeah. And I say all of this to say, moms, you are trying your hardest. Your kids love you, and your only competition is you. Mm. So one, stop comparing yourselves. Two, realize it's okay to be crabby. Just don't stay crabby. Three, take the time when you need it. And four, stop being so hard on yourself. I love you, and happy Mother's Day. Mm, so good. <laughs> really enjoyed that today. Um, I stayed quiet while she was sharing because I didn't want to get yelled at. <laughs> Me? Yell? Never. <laughs> no. <laughs> Seriously, moms, dads, family members, kids, take these things into consideration. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am naturally an angry person. It's part of my DNA. It's how mm -hmm. I respond to things. So when you feel that anger trying to rise up, when you feel that emotion mm -hmm. happening, your stomach getting tight where you're getting boiled up, take a few minutes, calm yourself down. Mm -hmm. Remember this, no one can make you angry. Yep. No one can make you angry. They cannot. You are choosing to respond to their stupidness <laughs> in anger. Mm -hmm. Or you're, you're choosing to respond in what they say to you or how they acted or that they hurt you or whatever it is. You're choosing to respond with an angry emotion. You could laugh it off. Yeah. You could shrug it off. You could say nothing and walk away. There are tools. Um, I, I just think a lot of us just didn't know that we're actually in control of our own emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's okay. Yeah. You're going to grow. You're going to mature. A as relationships, you got to talk those things out. Mm -hmm. We talked it out that we didn't want to be yellers yeah. in our house. We didn't want to do that to our kids. We didn't want to raise another generation of people that yelled at each other mm -hmm. to get their emotions out or to work something out. It's taken 20 years to work on that. Yeah. Right, And every time you're mm -hmm. not getting your way or trying to get your point across, it's a little bit of work to mm -hmm. kind of back down and compromise and say, all right, cool mm -hmm. it down. And, and uh, with Cindy, I know that she doesn't want to yell at the kids. I know that she doesn't want to mm -hmm. uh, be nasty or anything like that. So we've got these hand signals where I'll be like, <laughs> and I'll give her a little, hey, mm -hmm. it's a little aggressive. Or she'll do the same thing to me. She'll be like, really? <laughs> you need to act like that? You need to talk like that? Um, and, you, and you work it out. Mm -hmm. Life is this journey. It's this experience yeah. that we're on. And be willing to grow. Absolutely. Be willing to change. Be willing to mature. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I didn't, I didn't see you put in there, but I think that we need to tell moms is laugh. Yes. Laugh. Find your laugh. Mm -hmm. Put on a good comedy <laughs> uh, on Netflix or on TV and yeah. laugh with your kids. Go outside and play with your kids. If you don't know how to play with your kids, find somebody who plays with their kids and ask if you can hang out with them for a day, <laughs> right? We've had people do that. Yeah. We've had people call us and say, hey, I don't know how to play with my kids in the snow. Mm -hmm. Can we come over and go sledding with you and you show us how to play with our kids? Yeah, let's do it. Like, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. So anything else you want to share today? That's it. I mean, it's, it was great talking to you ladies. And 
I mean, whether it's ladies or husbands or even, you know, just humans, because we're all in relationships with somebody else, you know, choose to be vulnerable. Mm. And it's okay to not be okay. Just don't stay that way. Because when you are uh, transparent in trying to grow and change, you teach others that it's okay yeah. to be transparent in yeah. trying to grow and change. Yeah. And if you need help with that or you want to talk to somebody about mm -hmm. raising your kids or some tools and that kind of stuff, you can direct message us. You can send us an email, team at familychurchny.com. Uh, for more information, you can contact uh, Cindy right through the office as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and keep these conversations going. It, it's only a shame if you're not willing to get better. Yes. Right? Absolutely. It's normal to have the upbringing that you were raised with and, and the knowledge that you were taught. Mm -hmm. But you can get better. You can improve on what you're doing. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you on this Mother's Day. First, we lift up our moms. We thank you, Lord, for the moms that were in our lives. And Lord, you know, I, I pray for those who uh, maybe they didn't have the same mom in their uh, life the, the entire time. That, Lord, you'd bless them. You'd, you'd let them see that as a treasure that they were able to get multiple types of influences and upbringings in their lives. But I don't, I, I'm praying right now for that person who's missing their mom really bad on this Mother's Day. I'm connected with them right now. Lord, touch their heart. Let the peace of God reign richly over their heart and over their mind today. Lord, I pray that maybe... Uh, there's a mom out there today that doesn't have such a great relationship with their kids. That, Lord, you would make a moment, a time that they could connect, that relationship could be restored. Lord, we pray today that our moms are strong and that they're courageous. Those moms out there right now that are uh, being challenged to believe that they're not doing a good job, that they would feel encouraged today, mm -hmm. that they'd feel empowered today by the word that was spoken by Miss Cindy. Lord, we thank you for today that everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. We love amen. you. Have a great weekend. We love you.